And we're live. And we're live. <laughs> Live. All right, I was still. What up? What up? <laughs> yeah. What's going on, y'all? Oh man, Who's like I feel thing? like we we're always caught off guard, even when we expect. It. Like <laughs> even when yeah. we know it's coming, we're still caught off guard. You know what it is because it's like we're usually like talking to each other so that when the podcast comes on, we're not just talking to each other. We're also talking to everybody else. So it's like your mind switches to like, Oh, we're, we're like other people can see us, even though we can't right, see them. Right. right? <laughs> sometimes the best conversations be the ones amongst ourselves though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Cher is already in the comments. Like what y'all are on time. Ooh. <laughs> Yes. Yes. But yeah, I don't, I don't like them shots, them unnecessary shots you taking right now. <laughs> but you know what though, for the most part, the last, the last two podcasts that we had, they were not on time because we had a lot of technical difficulties. But before then, we was we was coming out on time. We was doing really good. Yeah, we, we was being pretty consistent for a little bit. Yes. Threw the people off. We, we yeah. you know, a little monkey wrench, but that's life, right? Yeah, that's life. Yeah. That's life. But we got four people on here right now. Yes, come on, tell your friends, tell your mama, your cousins, your sister, and all. Yeah. And if they ask who all gonna be there, say the BYOP podcast, okay? That's what's up. Say, say it again. I'm gonna do an air horn after. Who, who gonna be there? Who all gonna be there? The BYOP podcast. That's who. Okay. And it's crazy because it's so weird. Like I said that, and I'm looking at the little thing, the little eye on the side. Like, yeah, I can see y'all too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that's <laughs> what I started looking at. I'm crazy. <laughs> that's funny though. Yeah. Are we are we gonna start seeing the comments queue over here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. So the crazy thing, and and I just thought about this, of course, a pre-conversation before the pod. You were saying that um, I would be the type to like have like a scavenger hunt or something like that. You know what I thought of? And this is not an original one, but I really want to do it. Um, I want to do like an adult Easter egg hunt, yo. See, I told you, Keandra, I knew he would be the one. Tell you. Tell me that shit would be fun. That would be pretty dope. What you gonna put in them Easter eggs, though, bro? Man, so of course you gotta put money. You put gift cards. You could put Ooh, like little airplane bottles, egg. like little little airplane bottles like this. How big the egg gonna be? Like this big? Oh, you could get some bigger ones. Big eggs. They ain't gotta be. Said big weed. Eggs, I know? thought about weed. Just, <laughs> we just said weed. You gonna be putting money in, the egg in this economy? In this economy. You put money in an egg. Okay. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a little bit of gas in each of the eggs. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> you get a half an egg full of gas. gas <laughs> you see me walking home. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Can you imagine being at the pump though? And you're just like. <laughs> That shit is funny, yo. I would try to find all the bitches. What? People are looking at you like, what the mm -hmm. fuck are they doing? Yeah, bro, I got eggs full of gas. What's up? Like, mind yeah. your business. I'm, I'm fueling my car. Word. Mind yeah. your damn yeah. business. You be fighting for that egg. What else would That's be good to put funny. in there? Something, something real small that would be good to put in there, yo. I don't but know. That's the but the thing is, though, what if what if nobody finds all the eggs? Like, then you mad? Cause what if you put a lot of money in one of them eggs and nobody ever found it? That shit going right back in my pocket. What you talking about? No, if you can't find it either. No, if I'm the one hiding it, I'm gonna know where everything is. I feel and like I've you... I've had an Easter egg hunt before and I've lost some eggs. <laughs> you gotta I've write it down, it. May May. You know, it's yeah. really dangerous though. Get drunk and then hide the eggs. Oh, yeah. Get drunk and then hide the eggs. That's good. That's good. Eggs. That's that good. Eggs. Oh, you know what? Next year, BYP Easter egg hunt. 
Wait, that's that's what's up. That, that would be dope. We're, that would be We're going to record fun. it, and we got to make everybody that participates has to have at least two shots before they start. You know what, though? You know what? You gave me a good idea. I'm going to have that for my party. I'm going to get it. I'm going to have a good Easter egg hunt. I'm going to fill some up with some gas. I hope you don't mix it with your chocolates, okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody is going to get a little tipsy. I'm going to spin you around a few times. Go. Go get it. <laughs> oh, man. That will be fun. Well, y'all, if y'all hear noise in the background, my daughter is, like, running around the house right now. Still trying to hand me stuff. So, yeah. Oh. That's what it is. Yeah. But how y'all doing, yo? I feel like I haven't seen y'all in forever. What's going on? Yeah. We haven't seen each other in forever. It's been a little while. Been hold on, hold on. We got to talk about it. How how did you enjoy your vacation, Key? Right. Mm -hmm. Look at that soul glow right now. She came mm -hmm. back a whole new world. <laughs> exactly. Exactly what my friend did. Mainland for a little bit, just being blue waters and family and cool people. I loved it. Yeah. I loved everything. And I was so psyched out about the wild chickens. There's wild chickens just walking all over the place. Damn. Yeah. You're right. Oh, oh, Sierra, what'd she do? Hold I, on. I, I, on this section. Let's go. I C held a <laughs> CQ, I held what'd she do? Study. I held a Bible study. Um, Ooh, uh, okay. I passed out. Um, That's a lot. Passed out food for the homeless. I did stuff no, like that. No, she didn't. Mm. But what did, did you really do? That's what Gee, I did. Come on, spill the tea, G. I ain't gonna say nothing. I tell y'all. No, nah, we can't do that. No, you can't bring it up in the comments section and then say I ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> who, else, who else was there so they could verify what happened? Okay. okay. Did you get flued out? Oh, I didn't get clued out. Okay. You get high though. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. High yeah. on what? Like life? you was the highest in the room. What are we doing? Nice, nice little bumpy. I took like a half and what Oh. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> okay, she's <is> going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Nay, come come here. Come here, boo. Come here. <laughs> Why is she screaming? She she is running around with a ball right now. Y'all, see, this is why we're the people's podcast, because people can relate <laughs> to the things that we go through. We are everyday people just like anybody else listening. My daughter's That's running wild people. right now. I don't know where my wife is. Like, wow. we, we are going through it right now. <laughs> Baby girl is lit. <laughs> Nay, nay. Oh my God. But wow. It was, it was fun, and I can't wait to go on another vacation. Mm. Yeah. I quit, and I, I told them that I was going to get a cutout of myself and, and, and have Keandra pack it in her suitcase so that way I could go. Really? <laughs> yeah. You know, if I can't go again next time, I'm going to pre order it so that way it's here already. <laughs> And it's just going to have the same facial expression. Man. I'm going to just be like, oh. I'm like, I'm having the best time of my life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so every, everywhere we go, girl, just take me with you. Yeah. I'm taking you with me, though. You got to come. I do. I have to come. You have to come. And then I think we should do a BYOP trip, though. Like, let's yeah. do something. Let's do, like, a little mini road trip, a weekend trip. Like, Can we go to Napa cool. Valley? Where's that? California. Yeah. Y'all, I want to go to Vegas, man. I've, I've been to Vegas. <sighs> Y'all, do you still ain't been to Vegas, right yet? Never been to Vegas. I just don't know if it's a good idea for me because I lose all my money in dating investments. So, like, if I go to Vegas. <laughs> but you got people around you that's going to help you and make sure you only spend a certain amount. We got you. Mm -hmm. She said she would yeah, you don't I get be at shows and stuff anyway. You ain't gonna be at the casino like that. I like in the casino. Just oh, okay. for a little bit. Play a little slot machines. Yeah. Cha -ching. Cha -ching. It's, it's different when the machines go off. What? And you know you winning something. Oh man, that's like the best feeling. You like, like yo. my hat off, my 
Yo, let that shit go off. Yo, I was sitting next to this one lady at the casino, and she accidentally hit the eight dollar button on the machine. Right, mm -hmm. that shit went off. She walked out of there with about three hundred something thousand dollars. Oh wow, off an accident. Accident. Was it three hundred something thousand? Did I? Am I lying? Maybe it wasn't that much. I think it was maybe. <laughs> It seemed like a lot, right? Because I was like, shit, I ain't got it, right? Exactly. But it was a lot of money. She ended up giving me and my mom a little bit. She didn't give us a lot, but she broke us off like a, a clean maybe 20 and $40. I was like, damn. Some oh, no. So we sat we oh. sat next to the machine and she was talking to my mom. So, so her and my mom seen each other around the casino because they had the same face mask or whatever. And she's oh, okay. like, oh, I like your mask. And they were like twin twinsies, right? So then they ended up sitting next to the next to each other in the machines. And so she's like, I seen you earlier today. She's like, Yeah, you did. So they're kind of talking, they're both playing. And then she leaned on the machine and hit the damn button. And she's like, Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. And then that shit went <laughs> off. And we were like, What the fuck? That's crazy, yo. Awesome. Yo. It's it was wild. like, take a little bit for your troubles. Take, take a little wild. bit. The most that I've won, the most that I've won, it was late too. I was so tired. My mom, she was like, just sit here. I'll come right back. Like she went to go smoke a cigarette. So I was like, all right, I'm going to just sit here and play this like last $5 or something. I hit this. It was a, it was like a machine with buffaloes and I hit this one button and the whole thing kind of like, it's like four games you can play at one time. And all of them kind of lit up. And I won like maybe $900 or something. Oh, wow. So oh, that was like the most that I was like, what? Yo, that's crazy. It was cool. Oh, I wish it, it happened like that all the time. Yeah, yeah let's go to Vegas. I think that might be it, Quentin. Vegas Quentin. might be the biggest trip. What's, what's your birthday plans Vegas. this year, man? What, what, what are you turning? Are you turning 34? 35? 35? I'm about to say go up one. Yep. 35? Yeah, big three, five. Crazy. This is, yes. a, this is a big benchmark though. So why not go to Vegas? No, it ain't. 35 <laughs> is a is a is I don't a, feel like people celebrate 35 like that. They wait until they're 40. Like well, you know, know, it's a, it's a midlife, yeah. No, 40 is the benchmark where people no, no you're halfway to midlife. Like then you'll start having a midlife crisis. Oh. I'm never having a midlife crisis ever. <laughs> what you well, think? That's a great oh, hold on. When I have my midlife crisis, mm -hmm. that's when I'm gonna become Q pop. That's when I'm gonna get the nose ring and all that shit. No, you ain't gotta <laughs> wait for that. You ain't gotta wait for all that. You go 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 ahead and do that now, Q pop. Go ahead, get that that nose ring. Get the get me, feel me. Right? Go get go get some cornrows <laughs> in your beard, bro. Oh, get it bearded down. Okay. Yeah, get some cornrows, some little, you know. Get crazy little... tattoos. Is it, get bad? Tattoo. is it bad that whenever I think of Tupac, I just think James Patterson? What, what happened? <laughs> no, said? no, no. Hold on. Y'all, <laughs> y'all, we going to get into the topic at hand for the night, but we haven't seen each other in a minute, so please mm -hmm. just bear with us for a moment. Yeah, what you said? I said, whenever I think of Tupac, I just think of Jada Patterson. You think of who? Jada. Jada Pinkett Smith. Oh, oh. No. We real <laughs> quick thoughts. <laughs> real quick thoughts because we didn't talk about it. Like, now that we see the aftermath of what happened, what are your thoughts about everything? So, okay. This this is what I think. This, this is what I think now that I've had time to process this. Um, Will was wrong because no matter what happens, you can't physically assault somebody. And I think that it was about his ego and the fact that he felt emasculated and actually watched this really good video um, that talked about his boyhood and like his need to like prove himself. And I feel like that's what was going on. And plus, he picked on Chris Rock, who's like comedians are like the bottom of the total pole when it comes to like entertainment. And isn't he on like the spectrum? He's got like Asperger's or something. So I don't think he would have done that to like The Rock or Denzel Washington or you know what I mean? It's just. Yeah, he was wrong. You got to you gotta control yourself. Mm-hmm. Because you got some crazy-ass motherfuckers out there who going to try their hand with anybody. They don't care. They're yeah. crazy. They, they don't care. But, you know, he, he did. He decided. He made a, a big, big decision. But I also saw a video 
that was actually talking more about Jada. Like they didn't really talk about, he didn't talk about Will so much. Mm -hmm. um, he said he was wrong for what he did. And also like, you just, you, how are you going to run with your emotions like that? But he was like, Jada, you know, y'all are supposed to be a team. So how do you let your team member end up pretty much embarrassing you, you both? like that you know like and and honestly not even just about the embarrassment but like def like almost defending your spouse at that point like you got to stand up and be like this is not the time babe we got to go let's go even when he started don't you girl listen if some shit like that happened and we out, I'd be like, yo, brother, this ain't the time. We got to go. Yeah. Like, come on, we'll no. Away. Like, just, just calm down. I just couldn't see myself yeah. sitting there and just being so passive, like, this shit is normal. That's not cool. Yeah, but I'm kind of with you, Keandra. I don't think that she necessarily had any inkling that he was going to get up and do that. Like, and obviously, Chris Rock didn't either. And but honestly, he maybe Will didn't even know what he was going to do in that moment. But like my, it's like, but he went up there, came back and sat down and then started saying all that. Like, like if I would have saw some, my man go up there and hit somebody in the face, I would have been like, oh, oh, it's time to go. What are we doing in here? We're right be in shock, though. I think she was in shock. Everybody else was. But even yeah. after, though, like mm -hmm. after everything has panned out or whatever, like. I would figure she would have had more. She would have had her spouse's back a little bit more than what she did. Like you haven't heard any like statements actually like mm -hmm. justifying his character or anything like that. Like mm -hmm. if, at yeah. most, I think I heard from a person in her camp that was yeah. saying something about she um, thought it was wrong and that um, she didn't need defending. She, she, uh, something like that. Like, I don't think that's the statement that you make at that moment. She no, but she, you got to think about it. Like, she doesn't seem to ever really have it. I feel like we could do a whole episode on Will and Jada because, like, I don't pay attention to them the way people do. But, like, because of this whole thing that had happened, I was, like, watching their interviews and stuff. And, like, I don't like when people make women the, the responsible party for, like, the behavior of their partners. But... I just see some traits in her that just kind of scream. A little off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Just, just the way she talks to him sometimes. And I mean, he can leave. He's a grown ass man. But like, I don't, I feel like they might have a toxic marriage. Yeah. <laughs> like, but you know what, Keith? Yeah. I, I definitely agree with you. I don't see why you would hold another person accountable for their actions. He is the responsible party here. Yeah. But there, there's always like this but for me because it's like you are both two grown people who are who are in a marriage. You guys are together, you know, like. Mm -hmm. And so when you're together, there's got to be a response. Now, I don't think anybody was necessarily thinking of Jada to be like this, like, oh, you fight, I fight. Or you wrong, Will. What are you doing in this situation in front of everybody? I think it was just the reaction that people tend to have. It's like, like it's a natural gut instinct. If my person is in danger, where I'm gonna be like, ooh, what's going on here? Because I can't just sit here and act like and pretend that this is normal. I got we got to go, you know. So I don't think it was necessarily everybody trying to tell blame her like you are the person who needs to be held responsible yeah. but it just it's it's just i agree with you it's just very strange situation that just happened like the whole dynamic yeah. just seemed but that probably was yeah. crazy i hadn't watched it before but i watched the table talk with him and not once did she really seem to like care about what he was feeling you know it was more like oh i had to go through this affair for this and blah blah blah, blah. and i'm just like you totally like fuck to your spouse like, you just, you fucked their life, bro. I bet she would have fought for Tupac. <laughs> Shit, They're hold on. There, <laughs> that was my point anyway. Like, we we could really do a deep dive on that whole convo, uh, whole relationship, because to the Tupac thing, to the August Alcina thing, just to the way that they raised their children, to all the rumors out there, it's a lot with them. It's a lot with them.
always but been a lot. Always. And before always you hit your lot. butt, right, there's one last thing. There's a TikToker out there who made a video. So he literally had a bowl of um y'all remember those um like the oh man is there the alphabet like alphabet soup like the letters I don't know if y'all see this no I I think I see the way you were talking about <laughs> and so he was eating it and he looked at the spoon and it said Jada yeah. So he's looking at the screen and he was like, keep my motherfucking wife's name out your motherfucking mouth. So he spit it out, right? Right. So then he goes back in his suit and he said, Willow. And he looked at, at the screen and Will was just looking at him and he was just eating it like, fuck you, nigga. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> right. 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 Yo. Yeah, it was it, so yo the internet is undefeated for a reason, fam. Like, for yeah. To all the memes, to all the <laughs> Y'all hear all these remakes of the Fresh Prince theme song and stuff they're doing? No, now? Oh no. my God. It's so funny. It's so I funny. think it's really a publicity stunt. Whatever, bad or good, everybody's still talking about it. Yeah. So, it's waiting since the Oscar have had him. Because I can't watch this shit. Nothing. I don't even watch that shit. They watch it now. Oh, yeah. 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 They watch it. And they banned them for 10 years, which was which so, surprising. Okay, the last thing I'm going to say about this. Yeah, the last thing I'm going to say about this. This is one thing that has pissed me off. Okay, so they everybody claims to be in shock because, like, Will Smith slapped a guy. Okay, whatever. Wow. And everybody's, like, you know, traumatized by this. But I'm like, you guys gave an Oscar to sexual mm. predator Roman Polanski. Mm. You gave several Oscars to people who were handpicked by sexual predator Harvey Weinstein, and you still celebrate sexual predator Woody Allen. But Will Smith slapping a guy is too much. How come? Ha how come any of them haven't been banned? That's that's what I want to know. So I just a big fuck you to everybody who's like, oh my god, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to the Oscars. The Oscars been trash. Oscars have been Hollywood is trash. Wow. Guys, I said what I said. Damn, but y'all really think that this was his best movie? I think honestly, it's the best movie right now. That was one of the only movies that came out during COVID. Anyway, like, like <laughs> this is the aftermath of COVID, and you want to what is it? An Oscar? He should have won off this shit. He should have got an Oscar for Ali. That to me, that was a badass role. That yeah. was a good one. Or Pursuit of Happiness. Happiness. That's like yeah. That's, yeah. Like, that's like one of my favorite movies for him. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Even the um legend of Bagger Band. Wait, is that yeah? Oh. All, all of those to me were oh, more no, no, profound sure. than this one. Although this was a good movie. Right. Yeah. Right. But oh, you know we could what? Deep dive on this shit. We we really could, but there's always an opportunity to start over. Oh <laughs> I, I like what you did there, friend. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Make the slate clean. Start over. Just you know, sometimes you gotta rehaul and rehash. And that's that's today's topic. Starting over. Start anew. Start fresh. Is it worth it? That's what she said. Aha. 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 Oh man. So um well, first of all, before we get into this topic, we ain't even introduced the pod. I'm I'm so sorry. So welcome to everybody listening to episode wow. 35 of the Frame Woo! Your Perspective Podcast. Yes. Hey. BYOP Podcast. Yes. Hold it down. My name is Quentin, aka the only guy. That up That's top right cool. there is the fire starter, Keandra. That down the bottom down there is the female hitch, Mayana, aka Wildcard. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so we here, we here. But that was a beautiful segue, my friend. So, yeah, what we're talking about tonight is is starting over worth it? Is yeah. starting over worth it? Yeah. So, what? What? Well, yeah, of course, yeah. everybody's gonna say, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so let's let's kind of break it that down. Was so wholesome. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. a clip. Yeah. 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 It is. Yeah. It is. 
So as far as like it's starting over worth it, like I feel like it could apply to many areas of your life. So yeah. when it comes down to maybe like your relationships. Starting over for quitters. I'm sorry. <laughs> The trail is on fire. Sorry, no words for quitters. What? what? Oh, okay. <laughs> no for quitters. Why okay, is that so, so funny? Yeah. I never thought of that. That might have actually be true, the trail. Have y'all thought about that though? Do y'all think starting over is for quitters? You no. know what? Yes, but this is this is the thing. Sometimes quitting is a good thing. Okay. Because and I read I saw a meme where it said like one of the best things you can do is quit. So like. Quit the bullshit that you've been doing and get on some new shit. Because if you're starting over, it's because you, you've probably taken some time to like reevaluate whatever it is that you're doing, and you've come to the conclusion that it's not working for you. So like, there's there sometimes you gotta quit. Like whether it's a bad relationship, it's a bad job, it's you know don't don't feel like you gotta tough it out just because you want to say that you did, especially not getting anything out of it. Hashtag get on some new shit. That's what Keandra said. Get on some new shit. Get on some new shit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I kind of echo echo those sentiments. Um, because really, I would say starting over is sometimes the only option to kind of get the life that you want, you know? Yeah. Now, and the crazy thing was we were talking about the whole Will Smith thing. The thing that popped into my head just a second ago, as I was saying that. Was Fresh Prince of Bel Air because I've been watching the remake recently. So think it's about it. Really Will good. It's really good, by the way. It's, it's so really good. good. I didn't think it was gonna be good. It's great. No, it's good. It's this really is good. like black. It's it's like black excellence, black luxury, black just beauty. It's it's really it's nice. But just think it's about good. Will's journey, though. You wouldn't necessarily say that he was a quitter. But he did have to start over and have a whole new lifestyle sure. and, and move from Philly and uproot to Bel Air because of the mm-hmm. situation that was going on. So mm-hmm. if he stayed in Philly, do you think he would have had the life that he ended up having, having all the opportunities that he was end up given and yeah. the things that happened in his life and the people that he met? So sometimes mm-hmm. it's a necessary. Well, I wouldn't say evil. It's a necessary thing um, to get the life that you want or desire. Yeah, but it's so hard to say that too because, like, you have some people who, like, for instance, I have known some people who grew up in like the projects, right? And sometimes, you know, we can kind of assume how a person is going to come up, and you know, um, pretty much like be when they're older or whatever but you know then you have some folks who grow up in the projects and they are incredible like you know there's it's just sometimes people don't have to become a product of their environment and also can thrive in in those predicaments now it is a little bit challenging of course like it's just it's just it's a little different because you'll never know you'll never know If you continue down that road, where you would end up now, granted, you know, when he moved with his family, of course, it's definitely just a lot of opportunities. However, look at Carlton. Carlton's got all the opportunities in the world, but is strung out on drugs. And, you know, he's he could be his in his own way. And I think that's what it is. If you are in your own way, that really can determine how far you're capable of going, because at some point you have to make a decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I like that you brought up Carlton because I think that for those of you guys in the audience who have not watched this, watch it. Like it's really good. But I think Carlton's going to end up being my one of my favorite characters, and that's just because there's so much potential for character development there, and he's like a villain that I can see becoming like an anti-hero mm-hmm. as he as he progresses. So. um everybody's bottom is relative to. So like, if you talk about like, um, like if, if you compare the two, right? Somebody like Will and then somebody like Carlton and you look at the way that they grow up and people will say like, hey, my starting over was more difficult than your starting over because I started at the projects and you started, you know, in a, a right. Yeah, but it's just because the starting points are different doesn't make that journey any less difficult. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I can't yeah. imagine 
and this is this could be a whole different topic, but I can't imagine being in an environment where you are like the token black person and you have to adapt to that by pretending to be okay with a lot of things that inside you may not be okay with. Come on, preach sister. Mm. Preach yeah, on, right. sister. Come on now. Because yeah, at least Will has the validation from other people on the outside saying, oh, hey, you're a real nigga. Versus right. like Carlton, you're going to, you know, he's going to hear a lot of people saying you're not real. Right. So that right. creates like a lot of inner conflict, which I'm getting off topic, but like. No, that's a good no. point. No, yeah, you're right. You're right point. on. Because, <laughs> and I, and, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. All I was going to say is the point I was making is that like the, the starting points are relative too, which is what I think that people forget. So, yeah. Like, yeah. Bottom is relative. Starting right. from the bottom. So it's funny that you bring that up because everybody thinks of starting over like these major life changing events. But like to the whole Carlton thing, it could be just a starting over with your mindset. Right. It's like right. not no longer doing the things that you were doing or thinking right. the same way that you did before. So right. it's going to lead to other decisions <laughs> that you wouldn't have normally have made. So and you already see that in his character development with him kind of separating himself from some of his um, friends, that he used to influences friends, and right. stuff like that. Yeah. Right. So that's that's a great. Yo, how do we stumble upon Bel Air? And I, you wouldn't have thought these Will two Smith. things mesh like that. But yeah, it does. that was really good, though, that it, it came together. And I mean, y'all made me th think of Euphoria, too. Have y'all seen that show? I haven't. I never followed it. Just bits and pieces. Uh, it's so good. It's, uh, here. it's just <laughs> so good. Like, it's it, there's there's some there's some interesting pl parts in there that's really artsy, especially in the yeah. second season where... You know, for the, the average viewer, you can get a little caught up in that and be like, what is this? This is just art. Like, what are you doing? But overall, like like um, Zendaya, she is just so good at performing in this character. And the character, Rue, she's just so strung out on drugs. And, you know, you really get to see the normalcy in how an everyday functioning drug addict can actually operate and all of the relationships and just i mean it's so good but anyway we don't really look at it like that sometimes i think everybody always wants to go back from the beginning back from you know your childhood how were you raised and a lot of that shit is real and it's valid but we have to decide at a certain point what story we're going to believe and go with anyway Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with yeah. you. Mm -hmm. This this is gonna be a really good topic. Hell yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all that goes back to what we said originally. Yeah, the change in mindset because a drug addict, you have to if you're in the road to recovery, you have to change your mindset in order to change your decision making in the future. So and we we all, of course, we'll talk about different things and like relationships and maybe like careers and all that type of stuff. But really, the subtle things right there is why I believe that starting over is a necessity when it comes down to a lot of things. Yeah. Because if you don't change or evolve, then you you're bound to be stuck in the same cycle over and over. <laughs> How, you know, have you ever been hooked on anything? That's a great question to true. Hmm. Was that a question? Was that Jacob being a, a dick? Like, what's he saying? <laughs> or are you being serious, right? Yeah, like, how, how you know? Could be a little bit of both. A little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was playing. <laughs> He's a menace. That's terrible. That's my guy, though. That's my guy. Wow. So, oh, go ahead. I'm having a hard time hearing you, Key. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Have y'all ever been like, is there like a particular situation that comes to mind with either of you where it's like, you have to start over and it could be something like big or small and it, and you found it really difficult. Oh shit. Well, I can, I can, why me honest thinking of it. Yeah. One that we, we all kind of experienced together career. Well, a job oh. change. <laughs> That was hard. That and I can I can speak from being your friend. Like 
that was really difficult to, to just know that that happened to you. Like, yeah. like I was so hurt by that. Like we were all so hurt by that where it was like, oh my gosh, like, what do you do in this position? Like, what do you do at that point, Q? Like there were so many new things happening for you at that very moment. I'm going to let you go off and speak that's about what, it, but damn. That's exactly what I was going to get into. So for those that don't know, um, the job that we all worked together I actually was let go from that job. Unfairly. Unfairly. <laughs> uh, you always point that out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, though. It was the truth on some bullshit for the most part. But yeah, so pretty much what happened was I was let go due to a a stipulation where we weren't supposed to help students with certain tasks that they needed to do to get enrolled. And I was helping the student. So, but long story short, it came at the worst possible time because one, this was 2020 during the pandemic. So of course everything is in a frenzy. Um, but then also I had recently just disclosed to like my uh, coworkers that I was actually expecting a child, my first child. Um, so in the middle of all of that, just an unexpected like gut punch just came by. So I, the change part of it, it even though it, it sucked in the moment because that was my only time ever being let go from a, from an employer, but I would say honestly is it was a necessary thing um, because sometimes and not to get too spiritual or anything, I feel like sometimes God will remove you from certain situations that you won't be brave enough to remove yourself out of. Yeah. So I feel like even though wow, I maybe you. wasn't the yes. happiest in that situation, oh, that was good. I wouldn't necessarily yeah. say that I had the courage or the wherewithal to actually leave it. Like mm -hmm. sometimes we figure we can endure so much and we'll, oh, it'll be fine. We'll, we'll get to another day. But sometimes you actually need that change so that you can do what you need to do um, yeah. moving forward in life. But it sucked. It sucked yeah. ass. But then looking back on it, it was a necessary evil because I learned so much through that experience. Um, mm -hmm. And also, I feel like that was the catalyst of this whole podcast. Because yeah. without that, I don't think that the idea would have started between Keandra and Mayana to start the podcast. I don't think that they would have asked me and Letitia to be a part of it. Like, great things happen for a reason. Wow. It really does. Roses bloom from concrete. Facts. Wow. Yeah. Facts. Hold Give on, yourself hold an air horn for that. Come on now, brother. Yeah. 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 I like that. He said, take him to church. That was great, Q. Like, really good. Like, I really hope once we, we put that clip out there, too, like, other people can really hold on to it, you know? Because I feel like that's a part of, my, like, like, my being on this planet, right? To, like, like... What I've been through, you know, gives me experience. What you guys go through is it builds your character and it's also wisdom. Like I heard something the other day that they were like, no one respects elderly the way that we used to and the way that we should. These are the wisest people that are, are walking the earth right now. And we're not utilizing those resources enough. Like it doesn't make any sense. Like, but it builds wisdom to say, I've been through this and this is what I'm not going to do again. I'm not going to walk that way. I'm not going to make that decision again. Right. But for me, I think the hardest decision for me, like one of the biggest decisions for me in my life was um, I had already. So I in my my mind. Right. And like my whole family, I was always I was always going to college. That was never going to be a question. But. My brother was in the NFL. My other brother was at a Division One college for football. Like we were just a sports team, right? Uh, or family, you know, playing sports. So for me, I was recruited heavily in my senior year, junior year for 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 basketball to get a scholarship, full ride, right? So it kind of started getting a little bit later in my senior year, and I was also dealing with like my father passing around that time too. It was a lot of pressure on me, so. 
Anyway, anyway I took a full ride to uh, a, I signed a national letter of intent to play basketball at a school in Long Island. Now, um, after a few weeks before classes are starting, I had kept talking to my coaches about me getting notifications from financial aid. They, they kept telling me, oh, you owe this, you owe this. And I'm like, I don't owe anything. I'm not a student yet. And I have a, 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 a full scholarship, so I'm supposed to be getting refunds. I'm so confused. Please help me. And I just wasn't getting the response that I needed. So it was like, do you trust this process or do you move, right? And I'm talking about a full scholarship, y'all, to go with this, this, this school. And so I was like, no, I don't think this is right. So literally within like two days, I, I got a, another full scholarship, thank, thank God, right, to go play basketball in South Carolina. I go there for a year. It's just, it's not the school for me. So what happens? Me and my brother start, we, we start pretty much like hitting up all these coaches. I end up getting a, a full scholarship to play basketball in Hawaii. Like, no shit, y'all. Like, this is, in my career, one of the highest, highest like accolades that I could have ever gotten. So it was such a great moment for me. So I get there and I'm working my ass off. Like that summer before I left, y'all, getting in shape. I'm talking about working out every day, two days a, a, a week. You know, like, like I was going so hard. So my brother mentally prepared me for what I was walking into. Like I, I experienced the highest level of competition playing against my teammates in Hawaii. And it was so eye opening. I did pretty well there. It was a different level, right? Like they had us running miles that I've never really had to do before. And I tried my best, but my best just wasn't good enough for the coaches there. And I just faced a lot of challenges, not only basketball wise, but it really came down to, I think, race as well. Like it was like, yeah, we got you here, but you know, you're not meeting my expectations, but it's also a colorism thing. It was just so many layers. Right. So I had a really bad experience, but this is supposed to be the best experience that I'm supposed to live in my life. Right. Like who, how many people can say that they've done that? And I was so hurt. I was so hurt. Had I had a different coach there, right? I would have graduated from a school in Hawaii. You're like, you, who knew? Who knows what could have happened after that for me? But, like, needless to say, I had to make the hardest decision of my life. And my parents, my mom didn't make it for me. My brothers didn't make it for me. They said, you have to decide what you are going to do. Are you going to continue to stay there? Which I, I felt like at a certain point I was being harassed every day. Or do you decide to just, just throw it away? And I literally went to the coach and was like, listen, I am not going to have you treat me any type of way. My, I don't, I don't, I don't take disrespect from anyone. You can have your scholarship back and I'm going to go home. And I went home and I, I transferred to two other schools, but I still graduated on time. I graduated at the top of my class, you know, like all these great things still happen for me. So it's just, it's hard. It's it's definitely hard to make those decisions and to start over again. But I've started over so many times to where now it's like, that shit ain't did, been there, done that. Well, come on, but come on with it. You feel me? Well, hold on. Let me give you a round of applause for sharing. Thank you. Because I know that couldn't have been easy to go through or whatever. But back on it, though. So like the takeaway looking at hindsight like is this something that you you regret looking back on it or do you feel like still in hindsight you made the right decision no i do believe i made the right decision at first um i did feel like there was a lot of gaslighting because i did stick it out as long as i could i tried so hard to meet whatever expectation that they had for me in mind but i'm talking about not just the physicality of it, because yes, that was difficult. And I'm not going to lie. I, I I was pushing myself. But I also had a teammate that didn't make the cut who was pushing so hard to where she was literally bleeding after a practice or two because she was running so hard that she couldn't do it. She physically couldn't do it and was like, I can't do this and I'm not going to make the team. Like it was really cutthroat. Like it was really bad. <laughs> She was bleeding from her. 
Yeah, it was it was mm. just yeah, it she I'm talking about like the they they had us run a timed mile and our guards were supposed to run about six minutes and fifteen seconds and then like our post players were supposed to hit it in about seven minutes and thirty seconds or so. That shit was just really difficult, like for anybody, right? <laughs> so it's just that that was a part of it, but it just it just really got me back here. So I don't I don't regret it. If anything, I was so proud of myself being 19, 20 years old making such a big making decision. decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it hurt, it hurt really bad after the fact because I had to come home and my teammates didn't stand up for me at that time. Like I had to be on the outside now looking in, like I was looking at all their Instagram stories where it's like this, like made up fairy tale when there were other, other, other teammates that I had that were also struggling like me, but they didn't have a voice to stand up for themselves. So they just took it. And so what's crazy is like, I didn't have support from really anybody when I was leaving, but a year later, I'm getting phone calls. Hey, Yanni, they kicked me off the team too. And, you know, it sucks and it's crazy. And I'm like, well, what happened when I was going through that? Like, did you not think that that was going to happen to your black ass too? Are you crazy? Mm -hmm. Like, come on, you feel me? So, hey, it is what it is. You feel me? Like, it, it happens. But I took the power back in that situation because what happened? When I went back to Hawaii for grad school, like they paid me to to live there and they paid me to actually um, they pay for my food and housing. So I had to just pay for my tuition. And I met oh, just like you said, Q, right? Like had you not had that 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 change happen, you wouldn't have met us or we wouldn't have come together on the podcast like that. I was then able to go back like, come on, God, you feel me like. I went mm -hmm. back and then met like so many incredible people. And the first two days that I was back there, I, I ran into the coach. I kid you not. And I had thought about what I would do and say to this guy for years, like two, three years, right? Like, if I ever see him again, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do, right? Like, because you had mm -hmm. some bullshit. My mama got some words for you, too. But you know what I did? I was just standing there and he saw me like he saw a ghost. And I was like, Hey, how are you? And he was mm -hmm. like, huh? Like, what are you, what are you doing here? I said, yo, I work here now. <laughs> I'm a grad student, yo. He was like, really? Oh, wow. I was like, yeah. And I mm -hmm. gave him a hug and I said, well, nice to see you again. So. And see, that was probably the best revenge for you just to see the look on his face. Like, you ain't right. have to say any words. You ain't have to be nasty. It's like, I, I just yeah. want you to see me. You I mean, right. Right. The worst revenge ever. What a moment. So, yeah, I feel like I, I got I got what I was supposed to get. I'm not man. All right. Air horn out to you. <laughs> So, Keandra, do you have any event where you felt like you had to really start over? Oh, yeah. So many things. And, like, I know I've talked about my last relationship because I was blue in the face, but that's kind of, like, probably the biggest, most recent incidence of me starting over because it literally was starting over. So, like, I, I put my all into one thing for seven years. And kind of like what you guys were saying, sometimes you get forced out of situations. And for me, it was a combination of like circumstance and mindset because for I was too prideful to leave a situation because I, I have, you know, that Leo pride. <laughs> sometimes we don't want to admit that something is just not working. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Had it not happened the way I happened, I may have still been in that relationship. Mm. So had it not been like the cheating and the blatant disrespect to the point where it's like I actually have no excuse like there's no excuse to stay because it's so obvious now that the person I'm with absolutely like thinks I'm trash you oh. know what I mean and so I left I didn't have that much like I didn't have that much money I had to figure out how to live in an apartment by myself again and how to manage my own resources and how to just how to be alone. And this was at the start of a pandemic. It was 
Mm, New Year's Day even harder. Ooh. Of 2020. So I had to navigate a pandemic by myself when I hadn't. I was with somebody who was such a control freak. The I guess the side of that is that she made all the decisions. So I had to relearn how to make my own decisions and how to trust myself and how to trust my instincts and how to trust mm. Um and it was it was pretty scary because it was like I don't I don't know I don't know like all the all the things that I know now I didn't know two years ago like I, well to a certain degree I wasn't as good as it as good at it two two years ago as I am now so like yeah. setting a budget um, waking myself up like things that for some people are common sense it's things I just never had to worry about so it was kind of like a a forced grow up in a way. Mm -hmm. So like it was a starting over, but it was also like a maturity type thing. Like now I can't, now I can't panic. I can't slack because there's nobody to pick up my slack. So like I have to be on top of my game because I only have me. Like, I mean, I've got my friends, I've got my family, but like on a day-to-day -day basis, I have myself and that's it. It's just me, myself and I. So yeah. for example, like if I were to get fired from a job, I don't have a partner to be like, oh, well, we'll just live off your shit until I find a new job. Like that was gone. So it's like, okay, I have to start taking this shit seriously. I have to start taking that seriously. I have to have a plan B, C, and D. Yeah. Whereas before that was the thing. But again, it, it, it ended up being like a blessing in disguise because now it's like I have a level of independence and a level of respect for myself that I did not have before. Mm -hmm. So now I don't, I don't feel like I need anybody. Now it's like, if I add anybody into my life, they better be adding something to my life. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so funny that we're talking about this now because I had a therapy session today and my therapist actually read this short poem to me that I want to read to you guys, but it's called Autobiography in Five Short Chapters. <clears throat> and sing. And sing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I walk down the street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I am lost. I am helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I still don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place. It isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there, I still fall in. It's habit, it's my fault. I know where I am, I get out immediately. I walk down the same street, there's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it, I walk down a different street. Swerve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so sometimes starting over is like a series of small starting over. Starting over, small, like small restarts, so it's like, because it's a habit, especially if it's like an emotional tie you have, you might fall for the same bullshit five or 10 times, but you can get up five or 10 times. And mm, then eventually, that you part. Can, yeah, eventually you'll see the bullshit and you'll be like, it's bullshit. I don't want any bullshit in my life. Yeah. So that's, that, that was my starting over, just avoiding the bullshit and seeing it from afar. And now I'm, I'm applying it to different situations or different people and like, getting my head out the clouds. Sometimes bullshit is just bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes bullshit is just bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah. Wow, Keandra. Uh -huh. That was great. Uh -huh. Wow. I love that. Yeah. We, yo, man, we dropping some dynamite. Like, like, philosophical shit. Like, I'll be thinking about this at like one o'clock in the morning. Like, damn. <laughs> But that pothole that was in that oh, I do have a question. <laughs> right, uh -huh. right. I do have a question though. Do you think that coming out on the other side of that, that this may be in a in a sense kind of help with other aspects of your life when it comes down to like maybe your confidence or things like that as well? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because it you I had to have like a really deep talk with myself. Well, I've had several deep talks with myself. Yeah. And it's when you go through a situation like that, when like your self esteem is just kind of like fucked up yeah. and you get out of that place, you don't ever want to be in that place again. So, like, whether it's like friendships or it's jobs, like now I'm more equipped to like leave a job. Like, 
I'm trying to leave my job now. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like, before, before I was comfortable with being comfortable. So it's like, okay, well, if I'm making enough money to, to live, then I don't need to like, there's no sense of urgency, but now it's like, if I'm, if I'm not happy, I really don't want to be in that place. I don't want to be any place where I'm not happy or I don't want to be in any place where I'm being disrespected or I don't want to be in a place where I don't feel like I have autonomy over my own self. Right. You know, like I, yeah. there are some days I like wake up and I still am like, you know what? Today may not be a good day, but thank God I am not in that fucking relationship anymore. Amen. And it's, it's two years out. Cause like it was, it was a whole different world for me. Mm. And like anything I go through now will be better than that. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So it, it changed all aspects of my life. Redemption. And it isn't it interesting that I literally met you and came into your life literally the same kind of like week that all of that change happened for you. So I've I've seen you over the past two and a half years go from the beginning of that to where you are now. And it's incredible. Yeah, and and you know what's so crazy is we probably wouldn't have been as good friends because I wouldn't have had the emotional capacity to have our kind of friendship right. because I would have been so unhappy that it one you might not have liked me, yeah. and two, yeah. the person who I was with would have been threatened by anybody I was getting close to. Like yeah. it, it was that kind of relationship. So yeah. I feel like it was divine timing because like as soon as like that was over, like I started getting calls from people who I hadn't even heard from in a while. Like, hey, I was just thinking about you and what's up? And I'm like, wow, all these people are coming out the woodwork and I'm reconnecting with people and I'm meeting yeah. new people and going out. Like when we had gone to, to Gallery of Quincy, that's one of the first outings I had had in like years. That's interesting, Keandra. Wow. Yeah. yeah, like it was really like a, a period of renewal. And at that point, you know what I was looking for? What? I was looking for a good friend. Like, come oh, on, God. Right? Like, it just, it all happens. It all happens just the way it's supposed to happen. If you just learn to trust the process and you you allow life to happen. Um, I, I just had a really interesting conversation with um, a student at our campus, right? And, um... I was letting her know that there is this impression for some reason, like, cause there's no rules to life, right? Like, it's not like we're kind of just, we're all born and there's like, like these specific rules that you like are, are going to follow and like, you know what every day is going to look like, right? Like it doesn't happen that way, but for some reason there's this like overall kind of feeling that most people tend to have is that like, like nothing bad is ever gonna happen. Like I don't understand. It's like we see it time and time over again, right? Like, like life is life. Life is gonna happen. There's just things that are going to happen because we are living an, an imperfect life. So, like, like I think what surprises me is when like really bad things do happen. A lot of people are unprepared for it, and sometimes you can't prepare for the storm but you can actually still be ready for it. You may not be 100% like, oh my gosh, I'm confident that I'm gonna weather this. But like mentally, like you, like it's like in life, you just, you, I don't know, let me get off my soapbox because I can go on all day, fuck no, it. No, but it's the truth. That's why, why people, real, like, that's why a lot of people say, expect the worst, hope for the best. Because mm -hmm. you're preparing for the worst, worst case scenario regardless though. Mm -hmm. But it, it's crazy that, that everyone has some sort of experience where if you really think about one little thing changing in that story, this whole thing would be different. We may not have this podcast. You may still be in Hawaii. You may still be in your relationship. Like it's so many variables <laughs> that go out, down to it. And you really don't really think about these type of things until you hear it out loud and realize how things actually work for our good a lot of the time. Right. It's the butterfly effect. Yep. That's what yeah. like like one change in history would change the whole future. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You know Jim like Carrey retiring? I know it's oh. random. Jim Carrey is retiring. <laughs> no, Jim. We yeah. all love Jim. What? Yeah. Yeah. That's he's, crazy. He's calling it calling it a career. Yeah. Well, yeah, he had a great one. 
random well, moment of the night. That'll be a start over, a start over for him. He start right. over in something new. Maybe he'll do something different. Right. And then what did we see the 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 first part of Kobe's Kobe's transition from mm. right? Yeah. Like may you rest in peace. Like you know, right. like just transitioning into a different different type of lifestyle, like like transformation, you know, like that's a big thing and it's a beautiful thing to see. So yeah, it's it's scary. And you know, you know why I think it's scary though. I think some people are so attached to like their their circumstances and their situation and their environment that they don't know who they are when all that changes. Mm. So like being comfortable to them equates safety, but like you don't you can't grow without changing. No. You know? So sometimes it is moving to a new city or ending a relationship or starting a relationship or going to a new job, you know, just getting out of your comfort zone. That's that's all a part of starting over too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, wow. do y'all so have was, any like, like other I we we've already kind of hit on a lot of these various things though, but I was thinking about like pros and cons of starting over. So like I actually had wrote down before, but I think y'all have already hit the ones I said because I had said cons to starting over. One, one it could be scary. There's a fear factor there, and you literally just said it's scary. <laughs> and then one other thing is sometimes starting over, your problems still follow you. So just back to the example of the Fresh print once again, even though Will left the city, his mm -hmm. problems from Philly still followed him. Absolutely. Better there, Absolutely. You know? Can y'all think of any other cons to maybe starting over? You know what? I think that in a sense, this is probably one of the few things I could say in life. Like I, unequivoc I unequivocally don't believe that there are any cons to starting over because any anything that might seem like a con in the moment is not going to be a con forever. It's, it's just temporary. So like, yeah, it's scary, but everything new is scary in yeah. a sense. Or yeah, your problems might follow you, but then you just start over again with your your new mindset or you, what whatever it is that that problem is, you just start over and fix it. So I, I don't think there are any cons. I just, I, mm -hmm. Go ahead, I'm Key. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. I just think that there are... I just think there are just some things that make it uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't think it's a con, though. Yeah. You know what, though? I do believe that... I th I think I think I understand where both of you are right like it's like there's it's like a it's like a two-sided coin at this point but I feel like there might be habitual starter overs like like mm -hmm. in a way you're you're thrilled by the new start over to where you're running away you're, mm -hmm. you're a lot of times I feel like you might be running away from yourself oh that's very like, true right like and it's like it's an internal thing like when what you said right when will move to a this whole new state he still has these internal problems because maybe he doesn't feel good enough right he doesn't feel like he's a, he's a, at the standard of where he is with these other people and i feel like if you find yourself habitually wanting to start over and i don't think they really think that it's starting over they just want change because my life will be so much better here. My life will be it will be it'll change here. But if you don't have the the perspective, or you didn't learn, I think yeah. I think part of starting over is that you have to be in a space of growth and have learned something. And when you start over, you're starting over with the mindset of, I'm not walking into a perfect position. I'm just walking into new territory. Yeah. I can't have the expectation that the grass is going to be greener on the other side. I'm walking into a new a new place that's going to be hopefully good for me. And I'm going to trust that process. But I think to your point, Q, right, like I'm just going to start over because I think this is going to be best. This is going to be great. And then your expectations are so high and it doesn't happen the way you think so. And then you keep starting over. What if you stay just a little longer? 
right? Like, what yep. if you really, like, really, point. in a way, you didn't give up, right, on something that was super important just because it got a little hard? I think that's what happens. It's like these make or break positions because each of us had a, a moment where we had to recover, like Q, right? It happened to you, but you really had to take a moment to process, understand why, grow from that, take it with you onto the new, 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 new subject or new life that you're living, right? And use that for yourself. For me, I had to do the same thing. I had to find the glory in that situation. And for you as well, Keandra, like you had a whole growing process where you're not like, oh, well, I just got to move on to the new baddest bitch and, you know, she's going to be the best thing walking on the earth. No, you ain't doing that. You're, you're using logic. So I think I think that's where it comes down to, too. Like, you got to be really practical about it. Like, did you learn what you were supposed to learn right here before you move on? <laughs> like, don't just keep moving on. Just to keep moving on. What the fuck is that? Like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I definitely agree, but I guess I personally wouldn't consider that. I just to me that falls along the lines of escapism which like okay, what you were saying okay. before it's like an escape and escapism and like starting over is exactly what you were saying like those yeah. are two different things yeah like, I, I actually know somebody like that who yeah. it's every week they have a new dream job where they have like a new every person that they try anything with any type of relationship something goes wrong it's that person's fault yeah. it's never their fault it's yeah. it's everybody else or they they want to move to this state or that state or this state and that's that's going to solve all their problems and right. like you were saying it's going to be the same shit because the problem is within right mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's, it's not without yeah 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 that's yeah. Good. That's that's good. yeah so that that's good starting over, starting over come to the t- come come closer starting over what starting over but don't let okay. it turn into escapism. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I love Ooh, that. I like that. I love that. So, so of course, like what when you were saying, Mayana, how she she didn't start over and try to find the bad bitch and all that stuff. That's just because Megan Good ain't come back in her life yet. That's all. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, yeah, you That's know. So mad at all. She just. She just <laughs> She just got out of, she's divorcing guys. I'm trying to not pressure her into it. <laughs> give her you some know, time. Some time. Just go. <laughs> she's the original hot girl, Meg. I don't give a fuck. Megan yeah. Good is still bad, you know. She is pretty. still gorgeous. Mm-hmm. But you know what? And I, I was thinking about this actually earlier today. I don't know why. I think like a lot of times when we get on the pod. And we be talking about different people that we are attracted to or have crushes on or whatever. Mm-hmm. I feel like I always give y'all people that I like in the moment, but I always give y'all the people that I'm um I like, but I ain't really into like that anyway. Like the people like that I gave y'all was like super. I think that she is beautiful. I think that she is down to earth. She's young. I think that. In a couple of years, people are going to be looking at her like a lot different. Same mm. thing for Ella May. Mm. But I feel like the same person. <laughs> right. Real wholesome, right? But I was thinking, <laughs> and I was telling my wife earlier, I was like, these there are some really exotic people out here that are like absolutely gorgeous. Like we was looking at a movie with Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman. I was like, she is absolutely gorgeous. Um, oh, wow. what's the other one? Um, jump um Nick. Jonas' wife, um, Priyanka Chopra. Yes, she is beautiful. Who else? I don't know if you know. Um, it's this other one. She she's been in a lot of movies, but she stars in this FX show called Atlanta. Um, Yazzy Beats. I think she was in that. Um, oh yeah, she was in the Joker. Yeah, and yeah, she was in Deadpool too. Yes, she was. Yeah. She played with Lucky. What's the girl's name? Domino. Yeah, like Domino. Dom- yeah. I, I, I love her spirit. Why don't I know who I that have is? No idea. You, you'll know if you've seen her. If you've you seen see, her. Did you see Joker, man? Yeah. She was the girl that he liked. Oh, her. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I noticed you aren't uh, naming any ambiguously black women. I was thinking that. I was like, wait a minute. Hold on. What's going on? 
Perhaps. Well, um, Lauren London has always been one. Um, ambiguously black. So ambiguously black, meaning that it's got Afrocentric features and darker skin. And no, okay. Okay, that's cool. Hmm. <laughs> it's, oh, that's a different topic. That is a different topic. I can think of one. We could talk about it one day. Who? Um, so Ooh. she's actually been out for a while, but Sarah Hicks. I saw a picture of her. Like, if you've seen Belly and um, what, what was the other one? She's been in like a couple of like movies in the 90s, but she's like 43. But she's so gorgeous. Tarah Hicks. And then I can't think of the other girl's name, but she was in. I'm going to find it. Okay. Justine Sky, I think, is really beautiful. Um, I don't know who that is the girl Just, off of uh, Queen and Slim? I think she's so pretty. Oh yeah, she's a little weird, but I think oh, she's very pretty too. What's her name? I can't think of. She's her. cute. Oh, so Jody Smith Turner. Jody yeah. Smith Turner. Jody Smith Turner. She's beautiful. She's cute, beautiful. but I don't look at her like that. Why not? I don't. I just don't. Mm. Uh oh. See, look at Keandra trying to. <laughs> <laughs> or would, would you consider maybe someone like a Kelly Rowland in that perspective? Yes. yes. You know, Kelly has gotten better with age. She's always been pretty, but like she's beautiful. I feel like she's gorgeous and like super underrated with how pretty she is. In like, so many ways though. Her her aura is just is huge. Her it's smile. Beautiful. Like she just has like and her yeah. skin is just like so flawless. She's got the prettiest skin. Yeah, y'all see, um, y'all haven't watched Bridgerton, right? Uh, I didn't watch the second season. The second season, the two, the two women on the show, they're actually British, but they're from India. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Like, if you have a moment after this, go ahead and look up Bridgerton and see the two girls on that show, like. I found myself watching and I was like, wow, these are really beautiful girls. Like, seriously, I'm so glad that they, they did that. Yo, you see what we're doing right now? It's so funny because we, I need to talk about this on the man cave. Men can never have this conversation amongst each other. Like, yo, yo, that Wesley Snipes, though. Yo. <laughs> he is so handsome, yo. <laughs> Oh, oh man, Michael B. Jordan, though. Yo, he's a handsome dude. Oh, Say it again. Come up. Who's your man crush? Like you have to have a man. Crush. I have a man crush. <laughs> no, it's like, but this thing we're, we are we are getting rid of heteronormativity. So what That's is your fine. man? Crush? I just don't have a man crush. <laughs> so there's no guy that you admire, you look up to, you think he's a handsome guy. It's not romantic. You just think he's handsome. There's plenty of handsome guys out there. Um, yeah, so who's uh, a handsome young lad? Speaking that... of one, we just said Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, who's you know, a handsome young lad? Like, and see, this I, this I guys switch it up. Yeah, you know, you know, women be trying to get with him and all. Oh, he he cool, he cool, he cool. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is funny though. That's really I think good. We should normalize men appreciating men's looks in an innocent. I think I think it's fine. It's normal. Mm, it's fine. It's nah. okay. <laughs> nah, I'm not there yet. We done lost our followers. We only got two people still watching. Yo, what happened? <laughs> I think one of them is me. <laughs> but take away, take away, BYOP. Take it away. It's okay to start over and, and do what you got to do in order to achieve whatever your happiness is in life. And if that means starting over, that means starting over. Amen. Yeah. yeah. What about you guys? I second that. Um, I would say a lot of times I think we hold on to things just because they're familiar, not necessarily the best thing for us. So maybe just getting out of our comfort zone, like we said before, would be better suited for us. Because it's a whole wide world out there. Like we need to get out there and live and explore it because we only get one life. Live it up. Yeah. Don't be afraid to take risks and yeah. just so you won't be looking back in at your old age and having regret. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I say also welcome the challenge and embrace the opportunity. Like before you make a decision to start new, 
you should really try to understand what that new walk is going to be like. So that way you know where you need to, to move, how you need to move, how fast, how slow. Sometimes moving a little bit slower is okay. It's mm -hmm. okay. I just seen the perfect, perfect like video this yeah. morning. I think I, I I think I posted it on my Instagram. Did y'all see my, my story on Instagram or Facebook today? I haven't been on today. So it was I, I think I might have to share with whoever's watching this right now and later on, but the the one thing that he said was the the top of one mountain is the bottom of another mountain. So like it like it was just so many things that he said and i was like whoa mine is blown what the you know but really honestly starting over just requires um self reflection and i think you really need to get to a quiet space in your your life to really understand what is going to happen new for you and how you can actually weather that new walk for yourself so yeah absolutely yeah i love it lady i love it i love it i love it too i love it yeah I love it. You love it. so i think that is it for tonight so thank y'all for anybody out there listening uh, we gotta do plugs yo we ain't do plugs oh and for those that are wondering leticia is okay she i didn't say that <laughs> yeah go ahead go ahead no, no, I was going to say, Leticia's fine. She's just on vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's on vacation. She'll be back. She'll be back. She'll we be did back. not pull a Spice Girls. We did not pull a Destiny's <laughs> <laughs> Like, they, <laughs> she comes no. back and we're like, you can't sit with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no. We, we love Leticia. She'll be back with those Leticia vibes soon. So, yeah. yeah. But make sure you check out. Our social media platforms at byop.podcast. Yes. Check us out on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. It only takes a second, but it helps us out a lot. Uh, make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We got so many clips and videos for y'all and good content. So check it out. Check it out. Check us out. Yes. Yeah. But I think that is it, y'all. Any parting words before we get off this thing? Love you guys. We love you guys. Thank you for st staying with us. We love you. Love y'all. All right. We'll catch y'all next week. Good night. Bye. 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 Spirit fingers. <laughs> Spirit fingers. Thumbnail, y'all. Thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs>